Creativity is by definition creating something out of nothing. If you're an artist, you learn that the thing that you think you're creating is not the thing that you end up creating. The idea of failure in some ways is saying, I had an idea of what I thought needed to happen or what should happen, and it turned out differently. It's actually not failure at all. This is what art does. Art gets to the soul, gets to the, the place where values, where relationships, where meaning is made. It's change, evolve, grow, stretch. As we begin to question our fantasies about what our creative lives would look like, Louisa, Jeff, and I go a little deeper into the call to adventure and how for each of us that became more deeply intertwined with our need to be of service. I don't actually think too much about how I'm going to be remembered or what my legacy is. And when I said earlier about leaving something behind, what I was really focused on is just making a contribution. Mm -hmm. But um, when I had those thoughts about my future, future success, I saw that as I'm okay. When that happens, I have money and I, I have an income and I'm safe. Mm. So that fantasy for me, I think, was connected with financial safety and stability. I didn't realize that at the time. Mm. Maybe even more so than like fame. I, 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 I've never felt a real longing to be, well, maybe I have. But I think it was, it, it was definitely tied up more with the here and now of being safe than being remembered in the history books. Like, you know, I've always had a hard time thinking you, that I would really actually... Did you really think that much about it? Because I didn't. When I was in my early 20s, or, you know, teens, I, I had no real s formation of the future. I was no, very I did. much in the moment. I did because of this observation that I just described, which is I noticed that I painted poorly when I was thinking about recognition. I remember you talking about that, but you, you were doing your master's program. No, no, this was when I was 19 or 20, and I began to talk, it at my, talk about it at my undergraduate mm. level, and my teacher said, one of the only times he said this, he's like, wait a minute, y'all listen to him. <laughs> so there was something in what I said that caught my teacher's attention, and I was like, this is important. I don't know what to do with it, but I knew, mm. and I could see, that warped dumb stupid drawing is a direct result of me not paying attention to what i was doing and this totally cool thing that totally surprised me and everybody else i was in a completely different mode of consciousness i want to learn to do that but not by accident i want to learn to do that intentionally mm -hmm. and skillfully and with capacity and that started the more inner journey mm -hmm. of consciousness development because i wanted to learn to paint mm consistently with capacity instead of just accidentally by like supercharging my body with all of these excursions of the late 20s and early 20s, the drugs, the sex, the whatever. I wanted to learn to do it sober, consistently with, with capability. Well, that's true. And that actually is pretty deeply embedded in Worldmaker, honestly. But I think another piece in this is this O this overriding need or underwriting or whatever underlying underlying need to uh, for what you're doing what you invest I mean gobs of hours and all your passion and all your love and all your hopes and all yeah. your fantasies so much money and time so and much I mean my, my whole day. life yeah. that's all I did my parents yeah. were professional musicians all my friends were musicians I yeah. mean that was it yeah. right and I loved every minute of it, uh, but it wasn't enough. You know, I, I look back on the times when I was uh, playing in orchestras and playing in string quartets and doing concerts with my friends and blah, blah, blah. It was probably, I, you could, I could arguably say it's the best time of my life when I was in university and I had so much I was doing. Very, very rich uh, cultural experiences. You know, I was doing all kinds of crazy stuff with native people, the Māori in New Zealand, and I was doing um, lots of contemporary music that was written for me to play, right? With me in mind. Mm. And mm. I was... You, you personally. Know, yeah, and I was, yeah. you know, I, I was singing and, and 
traveling all over the country. I was recording for Radio New Zealand. I mean, I was doing a ton of cool stuff. Yeah. And it wasn't enough it, because uh, I wanted to serve. I wanted to be in service. To I wanted to heal. You know, I wanted to help the world. Yeah. Nothing. You can be as successful as you want. You can you can have your dream, but if it isn't serving, what if it isn't helping? What are you, you doing? You know, I didn't come to that until a bit later. I I mean, in my early twenties, my super early twenties, it was all about like riding the lightning, because I saw the lightning. I got struck by lightning, and I was like, I'm but, gonna do this. But the interesting a few thing years was, later, then it came down to service except that you and i met in, well, in triad, yeah, but I, we met when right? i was 25 but so by then i was asking yeah. that question yes. but at 21 <laughs> yeah. i was not yet asking that question okay so but yeah, i just want to talk about service for a second yeah. because i do think it really comes back to that it, it is part of that beginning mm -hmm. as all of us do at some point there's this call to adventure mm -hmm. and one of the things that well a lot of times if we have success early we get slapped really hard but when, if you're not actually giving something back to the world, like if you're, if, if you don't, if that, that service part is really important. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you will end up feeling very empty and you will go through yeah. a longer dark mm -hmm. night of the soul. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. When you don't yes. have it. And then it's even harder when you've spent your early life, let's say you, you, you rode that lightning and yeah. you, if you were having your, all your work up in galleries in, in New York, you would be suffering way more right now than yeah. you are at this moment. Really Guaranteed, the name is hard to recover from. It's really yeah. hard. You're thinking yeah. of the the famous paint, or the the, cl the club, the twenty five club, or whatever they're called. Uh, the twenty seven club are the people yeah. who died when they were twenty seven. Yeah, because they burn out. Yeah, right. But but it's it's the need, this need for for being of service mm -hmm. that is actually really important to bring in to this conversation at the beginning because, because yeah. when you set out, if you're setting out to, I want to be famous and be loved or I'm going to yeah. be painting and I'm thinking about being interviewed as to yeah. why my artwork is so amazing. <laughs> right? I know, the reality is, is that, that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe not. But if you, if it does happen, regardless of whether it does or it doesn't, mm -hmm. that, that is going to be very empty very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, well, and you the, won't get to great work. You won't get to great no, work. No, you won't. Uh, uh, the world you, well, is you, you might also actually, you might actually continue stumbling through yeah. great work. You might. Yeah. You might. Yeah, you might. Um, but eventually the gift runs out. Yes. At some point along the way, whether you have success or you don't have success from, you know, from a success here, um, without that service element, it will become very, very difficult to continue or to find, find happiness in what you're doing, yeah. right? The singing yeah. or the violin become, become empty. The acting becomes empty. The painting becomes empty yeah. because you, the, you actually, you will need that. And to bring the awareness of that, uh, into anyone's call to, you know, call to adventure. Mm -hmm. And though we here in our forties are saying, we're talking about our sort of origin story yeah. as it were. The reality is, is that the call to adventure is going to come again in well, us, right? There's going to be this, this cycle, uh, the mini cycles, there's our overarching life cycle, and then there's the mini cycles. And we have the great fortune of having gone through a cycle and doing some of this work that we'll be continuing to talk about over the next few days. Um, but when we get to bring into the next call to adventure, and you guys have that too in some ways, right? You've started Magenta and you had, there were... There were growing pains involved, and now there's World Maker, and that's a new ah. We have this new call to adventure, and I'm moving to Africa, and that's a new call to adventure. Mm -hmm. But I get to actually bring all of that stuff that we've been working on right. into that. So I, my next one is going to be so much more enjoyable <laughs> than the yeah. first one. I hope so. But if you yeah. if you back up in a, a minute, one of the things that alarmed me when I was young was looking at the artists around me and ahead of me who seemed perfectly content with, uh, I would say, focus areas and concerns that weren't oriented towards service. They were, they were insular, they were art worldy, they were, um, you know, real mature people obsessing, I mean, mature in terms of age, um, <laughs> obsessing about 
what paint does on canvas, what the mud does when you move it around. Not focused on service, but focused on breaking conventions, focused on... So there was, the, the, for them, what I saw was there was meaning in participating in a dialogue within the arts, and that was enough. And I, I could, can't, can't fault them for that, mm. because I think for, I could see that that could be meaningful for, for many people. They, they, that is their mission, you know? Um, so I'm not sure that service comes around to everybody, that I, but it did for me. It, it well, came around to what am I, is it enough to break conventions, establish new styles, be the up and coming painter, be the hot thing on the art news? And um, I, uh, I, I just decided that wasn't enough. Okay, you can do that for so long and you get famous and you get money and you get rich and you do drugs and you have all these women or whatever, planes and houses, but it, is that a life? And, and I looked at Boyce when I was younger and later William Pope L. And I thought, no, there's something more in terms of bringing something of value to humanity because we live in a troubled world. So that's, mm. that's where service came in for me is like trying to figure out where I wanted to go in my life and what I wanted to do and seeing that certain roads that were being presented to me did not end or did not culminate with meaningful contributions. They culminated with, with fads, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, yeah. for temporary fulfillment. But then there was this other group of artists that I looked at and I was like, yeah, they're making, they're making things, they're saying things, they're involved in things that are important, that are shifting culture, that are shifting values. And so that was my compass needle. Yeah. By the time I got to 25, I was, I was on that road and I did not know if it was going to lead to success, but I knew it was the right road for me. I just want to jump in here with a little bit of a build on what you're saying, or maybe is it a build? I don't know. Ego. So when I, I remember when I was 21, I had this sense of, uh, you know, overconfidence of the 21 year old of, yeah, I know everything now. I'm like, I'm a, I've arrived and I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, but, but at the at the same time, it was a feeling of really, is this it? This is the world that I'm inheriting. Ugh. Mm. Right. Um, another experience, I was still playing the violin at that time, um, still going to head off to America. Um, and I remember going to, we had this amazing festival every couple of years in New Zealand, the New Zealand Festival of the Arts, held in Wellington. And I went to a world famous string quartet performance and they were relatively young. And uh, I was sitting in the front row with my very cute uh, best friend, Katie, and the uh, cellist was you know, he had long hair and he was kind of handsome and he would play and he would do these flourishes with his, he was jealous, with his bow. And then he would, he would glance down at the two pretty chicks just in the front row, see if we noticed. And I was, and it was, I, I so vividly remember this because it was just a picture of what I was seeing everywhere, mm. which was egoity. And I was like, who are you doing this for? Are you like playing for me? Or are you playing for you? You know, I really had this experience. So I was really wrestling at that time with egoity, my own egoity, um, everybody else's egoity. And I would ask friends of mine, you know, other musicians, questions like, why are you playing? Why are you playing the violin, dude? Like, why are you doing this? And they would think and they'd be like, wow, I've never really thought about it before, but it's because I like it. And I'm like, you like it? That's all you can tell me about why you were practicing seven hours a day? And, and did you have your own answer to why you were doing it? Or was that your, just your question you were just living like, with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think to ask myself that question. <laughs> but well, that was the question you were living with. Yeah, it was. And uh, e ego. Ego was, a, was really a big thing. And that was a time when I actually picked up The Philosophy of Freedom by Steiner. And I tried to read that book because I thought maybe the answer to this very real dilemma for me about egoity would, uh, it, that book would help me. It didn't because I didn't understand a single word of it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I tried. But even I would say to, 
you know, to the idea of service is that <clears throat> kind of jumping to the end, a lot of times you see people at the end of their lives after they've made a lot of money, this one thing is, well, I've been very successful. It's time for me to give back. Right. I always have to laugh at that. Yeah, no, right, because too. they wait until they're seventy to get back. Yeah, well, because right. well, you're giving back now, but why'd you take in the first place? Yeah, for fifty years of your professional life, just what? taking. Yeah. Anyway, you're part be... of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You anyway, it's your... a thought I always have. Yeah. Like yeah. you're t- you're giving back because you've been raping and pillaging for the last whatever decades. Yeah. Right. Was and that so, your point? No, yes. Yeah, well, yeah. There, that's part of it, and there's that there's that whole period in between right within that's coming to the end or at some point looking back and saying wow like i haven't even paid attention to the other to the service yeah. element i've been paying attention mm-hmm. to me and an accumulation or my my own growth or whatever yeah. and sure i'll you know i'll i'll pay for a wing of a new you know in the school building or whatever but uh if you have a billion dollars in the bank and you donate you know uh five million is that is yeah. that really a gift? I didn't think about such systemic questions when I was 22, 25, but um, I didn't have to. I saw what was happening with people who put all their eggs in the basket of becoming famous early, and I thought, I can see myself burning out and being a Basquiat. I could see myself using my gifts and talents and, and kind of jolting my body and my soul with with drugs, with excitement, with adventure, with fame. I, but I would burn out and hit a wall. And so at that point, um, I thought I gotta take a longer arc here. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of take a path where it may take me longer to mature and be successful, but I'll be stronger. I'll be a, a surer person. I'll have a family. I'll, I'll be happy in my in my 40s and 50s and 60s, and I'm not gonna do this thing that ends in sort of the near case self explosion. So I made that choice when I was young. Once again, I think there's, so the other piece is even whether there's that or the, the long drawn out or, the peop- or where there's actually no commercial success or, or critical success, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And yet that still becomes a part of uh, the question of being of service is something that is going to affect everybody, right? Because even if you're an entrepreneur, are you, you know, are you a day trader on, you know, trading stocks? You know, what are you, what is your service piece? Well, there's certainly a lot of people who, who enter a career path with the intent to, to, to make a ton of money who do that and then turn around and say, what am I really doing? And that's actually important, and I'm, that's why I think this is actually an important piece of this call to adventure. Because I right. think when one embarks on that adventure, knowing that it's not just for me and fulfilling my own destiny, as it were, and filling my my story, my yeah. bag, yeah. but that is also to, part of that. And we might not know, and it might take us a bunch of years to figure out actually how we're going to be of service. I mean, I feel like I'm 41, and I've tried a bunch of things and ultimately failed at a bunch of 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 my attempts at service quite frankly yeah um but that i think is that is fully i think that's okay and i think that actually coming into that call with this idea that this is not just about fulfilling my own whatever that is but that i'm here beyond just making me happy or me better or my bank account bigger but that it's i need yeah, I mean, want to bring that in there's an oh, sorry so there's a painting that jeff made um, called Be the Lighthouse. And that painting is uh, a picture of, okay, you, you, there's a call to adventure in your life right now. And, uh, you know, be, if you, when you step into that adventure, if you say yes to it, please be the, uh, be the lighthouse. Don't, don't settle for anything less. That's the picture, that's the image of uh, what you can do and be in this time, in this world, is, is shine a light into a, a pretty dark uh, situation. Mm-hmm. And, and serve the ships at sea, so yeah. to speak. The storm-tossed, you know, ravaged um, ships out there. I, I read something a long time ago that seemed wise, and the older I get, the more I understand it, but... It was that your life is lived not for you alone, but primarily for the benefit of others. Mm. 
And I could kind of understand that if someone had said that to me abstractly. And I understand it much better now, the older that I get, and I, I suffer through egoity and so forth. And we're going to talk about that on the show a little bit later. Um, you know, these, these trials that we go through as we grow. Mm. But it's kind of obvious when we look at someone else, and if we apply that to them. You know, um, speaking of podcasting, I'm a big fan of Ira Glass. He's done an amazing mm. amount of podcasts. And, or, or Terry Gross or any of these podcasters who... When you listen to them, they're so interested in their subject. It's not about them. It, with a very empathic gesture. And when, when an artist makes a lot of things, the things have to be enjoyable to an audience because that audience derives nourishment and substance and feels like, oh, I'm getting something. If the, if the artist is constantly drawing attention back to their own person, they you get very... Like navel-gazing? No, what I mean is... Um, the Paris Hilton oh, complex, you yeah. know, lots of show, not much to offer, but, but when there's a, when there's an artist who's continually productive and that production feeds the souls and minds of other people, then there's something magical at work. So that artist's life is not so much about them as it is about the others whom they're serving. So it's easy for me to understand that when I look at another artist and say, yeah, your life is about serving others because you're Cezanne and you're changing the paradigm of painting or you're Picasso and you're doing it again. Like, it's not about you. But when I apply that to myself, I think, oh, well, what's, what do I need to do to bring that, to bring a gift to others? And ultimately, it's in, it's in getting there is the, honing of this, is the honing of the skills to actually uh, fulfill what we're here for, yeah. right? To fulfill our dreams, to accomplish those things that we set out for ourselves. Yeah. And it's going to be deeply tied in to our yeah. service and yeah. our and our ability to be content or our capacity to become content with where we are in the process that we're going through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot of books out there about happiness, um, the secret to happiness. Well, I know for sure that the secret to happiness is a life of service. And there's this beautiful juxtaposition or a harmonic tone between your why you've come here so so that so your goals in life and your and your career path and your the things that you do and and your and doing that from the perspective from the point of view of a life of service there's this beautiful harmonic tone that's created between the, the marriage of the two of those and and only when you figure that out you'll find along the way that you're actually a happy person so What's coming up in me is something I want to explore in, um, in this conversation with you both, which is that, you know, when you're young, when I was young, I had these dreams, um, didn't quite work out. The path was really hard. We'll get to that. But now I'm coming to a point in my life where I am actually doing what I set out to do. I am becoming the person I set out to become. I am growing the capacities I set out to develop. But for different reasons and in a different form than I could have imagined back mm, then. That you could have ever yeah. imagined. And, and this thing about service, for me, would have been a platitude or a nice idea. But now, you know, um, I realize that it's like a rock-solid truth. It's, it's, if, the, if what you're doing doesn't serve others, neither they nor you will be happy. So it's this it turning inside out from having attention on the self and one's own ambitions and achievements to being, being turned inside out and being 100% dedicated to the meaning and the work mm -hmm. for others. And ironically, that is what then meets a deep need. That is what meets the need for belonging, for meaning, for connection, for a life well lived. Yeah. And we're going to talk about what we It takes a lot mean. of maturity. I mean, my God, though, like that's... Yeah, that's why it's like turning inside out. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna get there. that. Yeah, turning inside out and what we mean by that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. There, I think there are pieces there that is you know, and when you talk about the maturity, it takes that maturity. But uh, in order to get to that maturity, ultimately, because you can be forty five and not have that maturity, no, right? That's right. So it's what are the practices yeah. and the the tools ultimately yeah. that one needs. And I always said, you know. 
the stuff that we'll talk about here, hopefully we'll, we'll get some, we'll some of the tools that are in the toolbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is sure. a hammer is completely useless if you don't start building a house, <laughs> right? Right. So you mean if you don't use it, if you don't use it, yeah, that's the thing, right? Yeah. So there's the tools and then yeah. there's actually the practice the, the disciplines and the practice. I think yeah. it, all this stuff is going to be really fun to explore because that's from what I know, uh, of the work that you guys have done is so deeply rooted in practice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then there's the patience, right? And then there's um, uh, beginning to sort of separate all of the pieces that we've, you know, everything is life. It almost feels like it's a big tangled mess sometimes as you pull yeah. it out and say, hey, I'm just going to, even, you know, when I'm painting, I'm just going to paint instead of. I'm going to paint and think about all my fame. Right. Right. Because that's a, that's a, that's a tingle. Right? <laughs> okay. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. Okay. But, so this is like, this is like the martial arts of life mission, yes. life purpose. Right. Yeah.